A remarkable group of paintings in the Hauko collection are the works by the Florentine artist Honorio Marinari. In fact, the Hauko family holds the largest ensemble of paintings by this artist worldwide, including a rare example of a signed and dated work. The signature and date are clearly visible on Marinari's painting of Apollo, the Greek god celebrated for his beauty, shown here as a young man with thick curly hair holding a lyre. His head is surrounded by a radiant glow, similar to a saint's halo, as an allusion to Apollo being the god of sun and light. The lyre refers to Apollo's joyful communion with Olympus, the home of the Greek gods, through music, poetry and dance. A traditional biblical subject is central to Marinari's wonderful painting of the Madonna and Child. The attention to detail, clearly drawn figures and soft colors remind us of the paintings by the famous Roman artist Carlo Dolci, who was in fact the elder cousin of Marinari and his teacher. Another highlight in the exhibition is a painting normally presented in the permanent collection of the Luxembourg National Museum, Francesco Lupuccini's St. Francis. Lupuccini was born into a Florentine family of artists and he was working in the city from 1620 to 1630 and received numerous commissions. In 1632, he moved to Spain, where he spent the rest of his life in Saragossa. His St. Francis is full of life. The focus on the saint's gaze with subtle lights highlighting his eyes and skin is striking, while the light carefully brings out the qualities also of the different materials. The thick woolen cloth, the statue of the crucified Christ, and the book in front of St. Francis. Florentine Baroque artists of the 17th century often imbued their paintings with the Poetica degli Affetti, the poetics of emotion, aimed at rendering the individuality of their characters. You can also see that in another impressive work in the exhibition, Felice Ficarelli's Allegory of Poetry. Here poetry is portrayed as a young woman, wearing a crown of laurel and her face and gaze slightly tilted upwards emerged in calm reflection and noble thoughts, so it seems. The artist draws our attention to the eyes as a gateway to the soul. The quality of Ficarelli's painting is enhanced by a wonderful frame with metal and precious stone, lapus lazuli. At a small dealer's gallery in Paris, I found the Ferretti painting of the Harlequin and his lady. It had just been restored and looked magnificent. It is the iconic representation of the Italian Commedia dell'arte. The Haukul Harlequin has a distinguished history of influence. Not only did artists like Picasso and Boucher study the Harlequin, but artists throughout the centuries have used the symbol of the Harlequin in painting and costume. The great Belgian painter, Luc Toymans, even today uses the image of the Harlequin translated forward to a modern day jester. The magnificent Baroque frame with Putti playing various musical instruments, captures not only the joy, but the whimsy of the painting. Please carefully look at the frame and try to find the theatrical comedy and tragedy masks. It was a freezing winter day when I found the Alessandro Garadini painting of the Annunciation in New York. It was in a terribly battered frame and in desperate need of conservation. Looking beyond the condition, I immediately felt the great importance of this painting. It portrays the Annunciation with not only God the Father, but also God the Son, as personified in the visibly pregnant Mary. God the Holy Ghost hovers above in the form of a dove. Mary's virtue is symbolized by the angel Gabriel, presenting a single lily, the symbol of purity. The painting was originally and directly commissioned by King Frederick IV of Denmark during one of his trips to Florence. It is signed and dated on August 17th, 1709 by Gherardini on the reverse, and it is my personal favorite painting of the collection now seen today at the MNHA. As the last highlight of our exhibition, I would like to present to you a still life by the Florentine master Bartolomeo Bimbi. Bimbi was born in 1648. He entered the workshop of Lorenzo Lippi, where he remained until the death of the master in 1665. He then joined as an apprentice Honorio Marinari. After a trip to Rome, Bimbi began working for the Florentine court and aristocracy. Although his training made him suitable for figure painting, 
Bimbi is known almost exclusively for his activity as a painter of still lifes and portraits. His patrons included Cosimo III, Grand Duke of Tuscany, who commissioned from him numerous works for the Medici villas in the countryside around Florence. While many of these works document the botanical collections of the Medici in an almost encyclopedic way, the painting which we present is a beautiful example of his more freely conceived still lifes, which are presented within a landscape. The picture, by the way, belongs to the holdings of the National Museum. It was donated to our museum last year by the Fondation Lamarck. Thank you.